All right. Oh, time to begin with the sponsorships. I, I wish again. I wish this was sponsored, but I'm not. I don't have the credentials that was, for that so yet. If that was the case, you should probably switch music to uh, copyright free music. I mean, most of the music I've used so far is copyright free. Gotta get permission. One of the two. And like, like uh, some of the music I use uh, Falcom Music, the game company, and they're like, "Hey, as long as you let people know that it's our music, we don't care." And I'm like, "Bet." That's what I've used in like all my YouTube videos that I have music in anyway. So, um, the last session, y'all had a really good time. Saw some performances, ate some good food. You met Angela. Tears. Had a bar fight. Also had a bar fight. Well, not a a boss fight instead of a bar fight. Uh, Tear like finally broke out of her shell. You met one. Well, you met two out of however many past heroes who came here before to try to fix everything. And she tried to convince the party to give up on what they were doing because she failed and she saw it as a fruitless effort. And then you met someone who was presumed dead from her party. You fought her. She is currently unconscious along with the other two individuals. And you are currently still in the bar or the tavern. And you can talk to... Ifrit, Tear, Fiend, or Mayor. And whatever you gotta say, you can do it now. Alright. <clears throat> I was out of look around, like, does anybody have some plank of woods so I can repair this hole? <laughs> I have a glue gun. <laughs> It was something I was gonna ask you out of character, one of the, the one like off screen, but you could probably forgot. Oh, Resident to your DM. Okay. At the, I'm done getting distracted. All right. So now, hold on. Let me get myself into character. All right. So that's out of the way. Uh. Mike was just probably having a good time over there, just watching. Oh yeah, Mike was. Mike was. Mike was spectating and everything. He didn't leave. He just stood there with a with some popcorn and a soda. He was secondary backup security. That's why. That's why he didn't leave. So, I okay. So I remember she came in and gave us a power boost. Mm-hmm. All right, so I'm going to go talk to Mare quickly and say, is did everyone evacuate safely? Uh, Any casualties? Any wounded? No. I was successfully able to evacuate everyone due to preemptively holding a teleportation spell under everyone's seats so thankfully no one who was here prior to the battle was injured some of the some of the young ones are a little a little shaken but they'll be all right that's good for the soul <sighs> that's good to hear Yes, I, uh, if only I had been able to have the foresight that my wife did in anticipation that something would happen, maybe I could have done something else, but I do feel that what I did is enough for now. What you did was more than enough. No casualties and no wounded. Yes, some psychological trauma, but I'd rather have that than have... I sent that message. 
I'd rather have that than having to bury friends. As for you, my character eye twitches while she looks at her and, and that was very reckless in putting coming back in here, but thanks. I appreciate your help. I, yeah, after Mom and Fiend shouted my ear off about it, I, I just, I could not do anything, and I was desperately trying to figure out something I could do to help, and I remembered that amongst all the other crazy magic spells that I can do I can every once in a while uh, hypercharge someone's uh, battle strength and that was what I felt I had to do and before I realized it I was running and then I wasn't here and then it was like I wasn't in control of myself, but like you said, as as reckless as it was, it did help. My character just pats her head and says, thank you, but please be more careful. You almost gave me a mini heart attack. I... okay. I'll, I won't do anything reckless like that again, or at least I'll, I'll try not to. If, if you feel like you want to help, then I'm not going to stop you, but just, you could uh, do it at a safe distance. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Next. Hey, Ice. How you looking? You, you were always up close and personal. Uh, oh, you see, my thing is wound recovered. I think that match by the way, Riku. I saw. Yes, it's an intricate thing that involves future technology with old fashioned mana. I, I didn't My character know. just casually sighs, right? That was out of character. I didn't. But as for HP wise, I'm close to 75% of HP. Yeah. So I look almost <laughs> as if I just got punched in the face. And just, and just casually walk it off. My character just chuckles. Jeez, you're really built like a tank, huh? No, I'll be like the Titanic. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> As I have bamboos with Riku with my question. I mean, I didn't think about all that, if I'm be honest. Uh, now you know what my other DMs go through. <laughs> I'm trying to keep your my character low tech in your case. I mean, if you want to fix the wall, you can fix the wall. Well, it appears to fix the wall before blames get pointed at me eventually. <laughs> well, well, I'm pretty sure the mayor won't. Well, Angela won't mind uh, a hole against the wall since you used it to evacuate. Uh, let's see. At least I'm hoping. Uh, as you are in the process of fixing the wall, Angela walks inside and she looks for any damages. Uh, she sees you fixing the wall and she waves it off. Nope, I'm determined. A real man fixes. A real man solves his issues. As I continue. <laughs> I'm de 
turn. I approach Angela here and ask, "How are, how are the two? Well, the one with the horns, she's alive. I'll say that much. Uh, the other one, she's also alive, but she's refusing to talk." <sighs> And then the one you guys fought is currently unconscious. I've casted a few spells to prevent her from doing anything, literally, except for breathing and talking. And they are currently in a holding cell. I've just come back to see if my precious establishment has had any other things damaged and that looks like a resounding no. I went to go talk to the children and all the other patrons that were in the bar. And the majority of them, they seem okay. And I feel, I feel confident enough that we can continue with the festivals festivities because I have a few guards I have a few guards watching over them and the moment they wake up I'll be there for questioning right we're going to need all the answers we can get yes like their number I just I'm a little surprised that I, of all people here, wasn't able to sense whatever the hell her name was when you guys fought. Interesting indeed. Was she being controlled? She looked like more of a diversion. Or a warning. I can't say if she was being controlled or not. She appeared to be acting of her own free will. However... You all knocked her out, and you all picked up those crystals. I did feel a substantial decrease in strength from her. So maybe those have something to do with it? I'm not sure. What I do know is that based off of the one with the horns, reaction to her... There is some kind of necromancy at play, because dead people don't come back to life. And if someone is, as she said, basically brutally murdered, and many other horrendous things done to them to the point where they are confirmed a dead person, shouldn't be alive. And that, that bothers me. Yeah, necromancer is pretty disturbing, but where I'm come from, raising the dead is not entirely impossible. Also, I want to point out how you said there wasn't magic in our world, and then you went 180 with it. <laughs> well, nano machines. Reanimating a corpse isn't impossible. Just the fact that it had its own will, that what made it disturbing. Yeah, I agree. And for whatever reason, she was particularly bent on killing all of you. So, I'm just going to go out on the limb and say that this broad has something to do with the destroyer. Or I'm sorry, the devourer. I keep getting that bastard's name confused because I, I want it destroyed. And I want it to stop destroying. So how should we proceed? Well, can't do anything for now because they're all in a state where they can't speak. So, 
You all go along with Mayor. I'm going to do some cleanup here and I will meet you all by the... Where's the next location for the festival again, honey? Uh, at that, it's at our carnival area. Well, it always is. Ah, right, right. I'll meet you all there. I'm gonna clean the place up and, and close up shop for the night. You don't need any help? It's kind of messy here for one person to clean up. Normally, I would say that. However, you forget. I can make several copies of myself. And those copies can make copies. And as she says that, there are suddenly five of her. <laughs> right. I forgot you're capable of, uh, making mirages, was it? Uh-huh. Yeah, it's just, I don't know, when you use those spells, it, it looked pretty exhausting. Don't, <laughs> don't overwork yourself. Oh, sweetheart. I haven't been exhausted in 70 years. I'll be fine. Yashua just blinks twice. Right. Anywho, you all get to stepping. I'll meet up with you later. Alright, if all of you would come with me and let my wife get to her work, you will, as she said, get to stepping. So I'm going to transport all of you, and here we are. Uh, if you could so kindly put your tokens on the map while I change the song. Stop that one and play. Uh, let's Peach. <laughs> Taking a swim there? Yes. My character is considered large for some reason. What? There it is. It went. Oh, the lake forced me into the middle and forced me as being large. I, I I approve of this. Wait, the lake is making you do what? So the lake was shoving me. So tile space is like five feet. So for the moment we put something in the middle that could sit at large, the lake is forcing me instead of going the single tile into the middle of four tiles. I said I was a large creature. <laughs> Yeah, oh. that's what threw me off. I'm all like, oh, you're a lake monster now. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, so, Mayor clears his throat, and he begins to speak. <clears throat> okay, well, not going to completely disregard that battle in the tavern. However... Things are under control, and we will continue with our festivities as planned. Uh, the night is still young. There are plenty of things to do both here and over by the docks. And so, if you have anything you want to do, feel free. Have fun, eat, drink, laugh, smile. That's what we're here for. And with that, I'm going to go get something to eat. I will see you all around if we happen to cross paths again. Yes. Alright, so there's a lot of people here you can talk to. Take your pick. Alright. Um, uh, Yashua just momentarily just takes the time to stretch after that hassle he went through. Then goes over and talks to uh, what's his name, Donald? Greg. 
Greg? Right, Greg. Why does he look like a Donald to me? All right, let's talk to Greg and ask him about an, an item that he picked up from the boss. What was it? Uh, Dark Crystal. Okay. And the Mysterious Veil. Okay. All right. Hey, Greg, a moment of your time. Well, hello would. there, friend. How goes it? Ah, an interesting evening. Ah, yes. I happened to bear witness and get the rundown from Alex about that little scuffle you all had. Yeah, uh, a fight here and there makes life a little bit more interesting here and there. Anyways, I have something to ask of you. Do you know what the items are exactly? This dark crystal and this strange looking veil. Uh, the contents of the vial, I know not. However, that crystal, there is, Ooh, oh, oh, oh my, there is a substantial substantial amount of energy inside of that thing however that energy is quite tainted I do believe I may have the tools to purify it and if I don't I I also think my companion Joe over there may have a few tricks up his sleeve that I don't. But, and heed me very well, young man, in its current state, do not attempt to invoke its power. What, it's volatile? It's not that it's volatile, it's that it'll kill you. That sounds like a challenge to me. <laughs> When All I right. said that this energy was tainted and corrupted, I quite literally mean that if you are not a denizen of the dark, the moment you try to draw whatever energy is within this thing, it will snuff out the light within you, it will take over your heart, and you will die. Well, that's fascinating. Anyways, what can you do with this? Me? Not hmm. you. I think... Let me see. He takes a moment and he thinks... And if he had... If he had hands, he'd be tapping his head. I believe I can... Well, for starters, I can prevent it from shattering if it, were, if it were to ever hit the ground hard enough for it to break and the energy to seep out. And I do believe I have a piece of sealing parchment to further restrict its powers. Give me, give me a moment while I rummage through this hat of mine. He flips his hat off his head and he starts digging through it looking for what he said he may or may not have. Can I turn this into a grenade? No. Damn it. Ah, here we are. Okay. So, if you would just very, very carefully Place the crystal on the ground. Do I have to roll for this? If, no. I, if I roll a one, I drop it and shatters. <laughs> no, no, no. You just, you can't just puts it on the ground. Be hilarious, dude. Just kills off my character that quickly. Okay. Okay. Now with all these in place. Uh, Greg. <clears throat> he takes a moment. And he casts the bubble spell on the crystal. He casts float. 
and he cast a uh, time stasis on it. Okay. For now, for quite a while, nothing. If anything were to happen to this, nothing detrimental should happen. And I've also made it so that for at least the next few days, it will be literally impossible for you or anyone else to attempt to invoke its power. Yeah, just in case curiosity decided to get the better of you, young man. As for the purification, I do not have the tools necessary to do that. However, I do believe Joe knows a spell or two related to that. And Sana won't work on the item? No, because the item isn't afflicted by a status ailment. Alright. Oh, if you're tired, go lay down. Let me set my All right. window. Yep. I have a temporary DM now. Not say you dropped that crystal. Oh, we just started. Okay. I'm back. Do you enjoy playing basketball outside? It was crazy. I got like the ball fell the other way and the way they were facing and I went to go get it and almost sounds like stay in Oh Yuki, do you have anything you wanna do interaction wise? No, no. I wanna talk to Adam. I don't. Mm. Okay. Thing you want, yeah, right? I'm gonna waddle up to, up, up to them after swimming to this lake because walking around for peasants. <laughs> okay. As I, is he still in that chair? Yes, right. he is still in his wheelchair. I see you still in your wheelchair, Adam. Yeah, I. I'd like to walk, but you know, can't. Have you tried engulfing your body in flames? What? Like uh, your head. Uh, no. I might actually give you the ability to fly again if you actually do. Well, hypothetical, of course. No, I haven't tried that, but I don't even know if I can move my fire like that. Plus, well, my body can't feel anything anyway. Perfect. Prayers in order to try it and get no results, then not try it at all. As you finish your sentence, Ifrit, <clears throat> she chimes in and says, Normally, if his flames weren't cursed to just that skull of his, uh, your plan would work. However, until we figure out a method to cause his flames to be non cursed completely, on paper, it's a good idea, but in uh, practice, also because he's not any form of a divine or a celestial or a positive supernatural being, your plan won't work. Well, that's my second idea. Because in the rest of the body, so the flame can spread. Um. What? If it's cursed flame, and the body becomes cursed, hypothetically, it could spread <laughs> through the body. As I slowly look at Adam. It, it's not biological. Oh, yeah, I magical. hear you, but we killed the wraith that inflicted the curse upon him. Or, not we, but cursed. you and yours killed the wraith that cursed him. But what if you inflicted a stronger curse? I don't oh, know right any up. curses. I'm not the. Th I'm. I'm a fire deity. I'm not supposed to be cursing things. True. 
Don't worry, I know. I'll just wrap my shoulder around and make sure you find a way to walk. Either by helping you randomly walk or finding a magical way. Well, I I appreciate ice. Uh don't don't run yourself ragged trying to do it though. I don't like rummage through my bag some miscreants of items. Uh, as I pull out a dark crystal, you think this will help? <laughs> At the moment you pull that out, Ifrit snatches it. What, what the hell are you doing with this? I got it. As a drop. Okay. Um. Don't just whip these things out willy nilly. This thing can kill you. Huh. Interesting. How so? Uh, As I run to my bag in some way. <laughs> the power within this thing is so corrupt and tainted that regular mortals shouldn't even be in contact with this thing, let alone even mention invoking its power. Because uh, it will invade your heart and it will kill you on the spot. Hypothetically, how will I... How... But I survive evoking the crystal. You don't. You just die. More so, I'm asking for a method to survive. <laughs> That's what I was asking. There is no method to survive it. It has to be purified. Otherwise, the moment you attempt to use it, you will die. Oh, that sounds like a challenge to me. <laughs> I don't think through my bag some more. My character just felt a slight disturbance. <laughs> What did the rainbow uh, scarf do again? The rainbow scarf? Yes. It uh, lessens all elemental damage by 1%. Right, right. Uh... I forgot I had a tainted leaf. <laughs> I, I forget half the stuff I have on here. Maybe if I you well, I know you haven't walked a long time, but if it's a form of paralysis, I could use a Suna, as if that fixed it up for you. Uh, I mean, it, it's worth a shot, I guess. I don't, I don't worth... think I'm paralyzed. It's just haven't used this damn thing in so long that it. Needs to remember that it exists, I guess, or however bodies work. I use it soon now. I think that caused like 35 actual mana, though. <laughs> I still use it, though. Yeah. Uh, you cast it, and at first, seemingly nothing happens, but if it beckons him to try to move something, and he can, <clears throat> he can move his hands. That's about it, though. Was he able to move his hand to begin with? He could, but he struggled really, really hard to. But now he oh. can do it without problem. I said, dude, uh, cast the Suna again. <laughs> no effect. Well, this means you need a crutch. I mean, a stick, a walking stick. Oh, oh gosh, actually, but... I mean, I would say whatever beats being in a wheelchair, but I do like riding on my favorite fire deity shoulders everywhere. It's really fun. A little bumpy, but fun. Yes. Damn right. Indeed. Uh, at least you're putting the ruby to good use. Yeah. Again. Thanks, by the way. Because. Ooh, let me tell you, even when I had a body, getting up to that mountain every other day was such a pain in my ass, dude. Good exercise, but a pain. 
I like my last option where I just force Bennett into his body. I won't do it though because I don't know what effect that has. <laughs> um. It's that's for science for later. I mean, if you want to try to do that, I can. We can make it a little spicy. Actually, I have an idea. I'm gonna try to use Muscle Flex and transfer it over to Adam. Hmm. To empower his non-existing muscles to reactivate them, essentially. Okay. Hmm. I wanna drink 50 men off me because... I always go big, it's either go big or go home. Well, you do that, and his bo his his physical body immediately switches from looking as if he hadn't eaten in about a month and a half to someone who very regularly hits the gym, and he looks at himself and says, "What the." Ice, huh. what did you just do? Because now my body looks normal again. Yeah, try getting out. As I like, examine my hands, like, interesting. Uh, he looks at Ifrit, Ifrit nods. He does his very best to stand up. And after struggling as hard as he can for about two minutes, he is able to very shakily stand on his legs he huh. cannot walk and he he can stand but at, at at a moment's notice he can and he will fall over ice what, what the hell are you an old fart with a branch as i pull out a branch you can use this as a walking stick Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> I, that friend from so long ago. Uh, thanks? Uh, yeah. It took me two minutes to walk, uh, to stand, so I don't know how long it took me to fucking walk. I mean, and if it, if it looks at the stick and she takes it from Adam for a quick second, she very slowly drags her finger over it and the branch is now on fire however it, it is in the form of a walking cane even better a fire branded walking cane yep and he looks at it <sighs> what did i do to deserve you woman and if a response i don't know you just fucking talk to me what do you, what do you want Aside from you, you know, being a hunk and... Whew, that's not a conversation for right now. We can have that talk later. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Ifrit clears her throat. And she says, are you... Are you sure you're just a, an old man? Because you're doing a lot of things that young espers are able to do granted oh, yeah. I, I did think. teach you magic flex but i never thought it could i never planned for it to be used in that manner this is where in my world science was a thing no science killed out magic outright because they invented a machine to try to absorb magic and it backfired badly yeah. Science. You wouldn't happen to have any books about this science stuff, would you? Nope. Everything I have is in my own brain. If you can't read my, my memories, you're welcome to. I can't read memories, but I know a few espers that can. One of which is a fucking psychopath. 
but, uh, I mean, if you encounter them, try talking to them, and then, and then, and then tell them that whatever they see, I want to know it. Because the last time you talked about all that technology, science mumbo jumbo stuff, it barely made any sense, but it was interesting. That's and I one. want to know a lot more. Right quick, does Adam have eyes? Or is it just glowing dots? Glowing dots. I'm curious now. As I dig through my bag and <laughs> pull out these luminous crystal shards. And it's like, can I put this in your eye, the eye sockets, Adam? It might make you look more friendly. Uh, why do you want to shove crystals in my eyes? Because they were used to see. Somebody else shoved crystals in their eyes and they were able to see. Uh, and I'm curious. Uh, Adam just gives you a really confused look, and Ifrit the... takes one of the crystals and she and she like examines it, and she senses the same energy in Fiora, and after she does, after she does that, she says, "Go ahead and do it." He he's okay. telling the truth. There's a there's a girl over that way who has the same crystals in her eyes as I put it put one into like a right eye socket first and see what happens before doing the second one uh, you put the crystal inside and after, like he, he's protesting trying to get you to stop doing it but once it's in there he's like what the fuck things look so much more clearer it's like i'm wearing glasses again and then the other eye it goes <laughs> <laughs> shoves uh <laughs> where what the fuck how and guys i they don't know all this uh the crystal thing i learned from somebody else huh well, I can... As he slowly edges his way over? <laughs> I can see clear as day now, but... I... Also feel a tad uncomfortable with these giant things in my eyes. You think you could make them a little smaller? Maybe, you know... Refine them down or something? Like... Uh, that's the thing. As I pull out crystal refining tools... <laughs> Okay, huh. so you take out your crystal refinery set and you sharpen the crystals down to where they're they're, they're they're small enough to where they can fit in your hand, but they're not too small. They're as big as the average human eye, and then you put them both back inside Adam's eye sockets. There we go. Okay, yeah, this is so much better. And if it is, she's looking at Adam but she's also visibly drooling at the same time. I'm slowly making this man human again. <laughs> and she, and she, you know, says out loud, oh, by Ramu's beard, how did you get more attractive? Oh. And then she, she, and then she stops herself and she's like, mm, uh, um, sorry, that was, she's also wiping the jewel off her mouth. That was, that was supposed to stay in my head. You weren't supposed to hear that. Uh, hmm. Wow. Quick. Yashua I heard it from the trees as he's approaching. The, f I mean, I the hell did I just walk into? Did we use the bird scale and bird peak beak for the army? Yeah. Okay, I just forgot to erase it off my list. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I don't think I have anything as interesting. I'm mean, having a dire bear, huh. burn, but he's gonna burn it. Hey, Adam, you look good now. Ah, oh, thanks. I, uh, you think your your buddy over here? He's doing some weird mystical shit, but it's working. 
Actually. Oh, he. I thought. Wait. It to uh, your friends, like, you think you can do anything with these for Adam? And as I pull out a prism shard and a fluorescent orb. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't think I can. I assume so. Back in the pocket it goes. However, since you're engaged and everything, I'm not sure if Adam has a ring for you yet. Or oh, does he? He has it. It's just not on right now. Ah, uh, are you guys already married? No, not yet no. anyway. We were gonna get married, but the day he went missing was our planned wedding day. I settled slow with the Adams like whatever happened to the ring? Oh, I I have it or had it. It was in that it was in that box that I had you dig up. And um... it's with her back in her place, but I until see. we get my body situation sorted out, uh, not gonna put it on yet. Of course, of course. Ice, you were able to restore some of his body, but you didn't uh, restore motor functions yet. <laughs> Do I look like a doctor to you? <laughs> 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 Do I look like that type of doctor to you? <sighs> so far, uh, and, and this is also like a quest, by the way, that you've been working on this entire time. Um, so far, for Adam's restoration, he has his body back. He can freely move his hands and arms. He can stand, he cannot walk, and he can see. Well, it's a shame I don't have an- actually, I might have enough mana for this. I want to try plan B, but I should save my mana just in case. <laughs> okay. But then again, plan- This plan seems interesting and alone in itself. So it's what fine. if we both use our mana then, instead of you using all of it? If you're if you're planning to use magic flex again, it's not gonna work. I know I'll try to use it with a combination of something else. I was gonna use magic flex combined with healing magic. Uh Magic Flex isn't gonna do anything, but using cure might do something. Oh, here it is. What's your What's the effectiveness of your cure compared to mine? I have to do math now. Because <laughs> I learned cure at its maximum since I rolled a 20 on it, so I don't know how effective it will be compared to yours. Or we could both do it at the same time. Five, two. Pretty sure there was a plus somewhere. Was there a plus that was in the 25? No. It was... For regular cure, it's... it's 25 <laughs> plus max HP divided by 2. Is there anything else to it besides wisdom? Uh, I mean, it costs 20 MP. I, I have enough MP for that. <laughs> oh, of course. Is okay, so what is it? It's 25 20. plus your maximum MP divided by 2 plus the bonuses from your wisdom. Okay. And if you remember, every point you have in Wisdom is a plus oh, 10 to healing. I remember. So my max is 769. Okay. So 25 plus 716 plus 9 divided by what? 2. 2. And what else? Every, every extra point you have in Wisdom is plus 10 to healing. So... Basically, just slap a zero at the end. Of yeah, so... Wisdom's <laughs> Since you have an extra 14 points in Wisdom, Rick, you're gonna, every time you heal for now, is gonna be an, an additional 140. But how do I add the Wisdom to the math here? Just 
25 plus yeah, 79 divided by 2 plus... Fuck, I can't math. Right here. So it will be a 35 plus max HP divided by 2. MP. And then you add your wisdom. Yeah, MP. Sorry about that. Then you add your wisdom. <laughs> So each point is 10 points, you said? Yeah, so you have a, everyone has a base wisdom of 10, and your modifier is 14, which comes out to 140. Extra healing. Okay, so. I need to hear from Dex is messaging me. But as he, as Rick does that math, I will use Kier on him. Okay. For seven sixty nine. So you use Kier on Adam, and a little bit of the color to his skin is coming back. Oh. Though, because it's been dormant for so long, he does look a little red because due to the blood flow. Interesting. Uh, okay, I can't math to save my life. Use cure. Well, I I did it for you, and it comes out to uh, five sixty. So you use cure on Adam also, and more color has come back to his skin, and he's looking at himself. And he says, "Uh, so again, long time inside the body. This feels really." really strange it's like i can feel water running around inside me uh wow. i guess some of my bodily functions are coming back like blood flow and all that interesting interesting how's his body looking What do you mean? Like, appearance-wise? Yeah. Uh, he still looks a little gray, but his skin tone is, uh, think, think the color of caramel, but like, a shade brighter. Interesting. But it's, it's still gray in a lot of spots. So... This is back to the magic flex plus cure. Can I combine them to try to form regeneration? Um. You can, however. It's gonna cause a lot more if that be that I probably have. <laughs> well, no, I wasn't gonna say that. Uh, you do have access to obtaining the regen spell. Huh. I don't have it right now, though. No. I do the old-fashioned way. It's makeshift regen. <laughs> the best sort of regen. Is it possible to, uh, you know, in case he doesn't have enough mana, I could, you know, share my mana with him? Uh, that is uh, a skill you will have access to later. I have enough to do both. So the concept... It's instead of bulking his muscle, I'm going to increase his blood flow, causing it through magic to speed up the healing process throughout his body. Or you can make him eat some apples. I don't think that apple's going to help him. No, those, that, those apples you had earlier, those are for just instantly sobering up. Yeah, but does my idea sound like a, sound like sounds like a feasible idea, Riku? Uh, yeah. Oh, second however, buzzer, that's right. however, um, I am going to make the NP cost a flat 200. Yep, I do not have enough mana. You have any ether on you? It's <laughs> 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 like, you got any ether, man? <laughs> I have plenty of mana if you need it. I don't think you can share. That's the issue. That's the that maximum ether. There's a skill you get later that allows you to share MP with each other. 
However, <laughs> you don't have that now. Yeah, that's why I'm, I'm, that's why I'm bumming off. I think I need a ether from you. <laughs> How's you drink? Uh, I could give you a. Where is it? I could give you a mana plant. <laughs> yeah, you guys still have those. Oh, yeah. We got mana plants to restore mana. Or at least that's, that's what I'm assuming it's for. That's you could probably I... use it as to create ethers later on, but... Maybe. I better mean, than nothing. I mean, you, you can eat the plant right now to get, like, a, an instant charge of 100 MP. Or you can take it to an item shop or an alchemist and they can make it into an high, make it into a high ether, which will give you 200 instead. It sounds like me consuming two regular ethers is a better option. <laughs> I mean, you need, you said you need what, one ether to do it? Two. I have the one on me. I need, just need an extra one somewhere else. If you eat the mana plant, you'll have enough. Yeah, but I know Rick has three ethers. I don't like it sound unless he used it. I, I, have, I have three ethers? Did you not write this down? I just don't know when I got the ethers. We all got it at the same time. From, when? Uh, the end of chapter one. Towards the end of chapter one. Oh, I never wrote it down. I never used them then. I mean, I'm pretty sure Ricky can quote me on that too, because he's yeah. the one that handed us to us. Yeah, I did. All right, here, catch. <laughs> As I down two ethers, I'm about to attempt this. <laughs> I can't spell ether to save my life. All right. I'm just gonna call it E-Pots for now since I feel oh. retarded at the moment. <laughs> I'm about to attempt this tactic. Let's do this. All right. Let's see here. Jesus Christ, that's another six. No, I didn't roll it yet. Oh. I thought you did, unless I was, t that's even better. <laughs> Okay, so your plan works. Uh, Adam, for a, a brief moment, is glowing a similar color to the flames on his head, and now all color has returned to his skin. I saw look both ways, whisper under my breath. Definitely not gonna tell him that I ate his body, technically speaking. <laughs> And Ifrit looks at you, and she says, <clears throat> uh, Are you always this innovative with things people teach you? Half the time. The majority, I mean, yeah. When you, when you have a dirt in a stick, you have to buy somewhere. Hmm. Maybe I should go back to researching the differences between mortals and espers. Uh, dirt stick. <laughs> I think I think I'm gonna go back to doing that. Best of luck. Well, he's still going to need to restore his motor function, so best thing you could do is just massage his body. I said about my comic with electric massage. But I'm not allowed to do that as I look dead at Adam's eyes. <laughs> 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 if anything, it I'm 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 pretty sure uh if Frida could give some out of this world kind of massages, so he'll be walking in no time. Oh, uh, don't worry, you two. I've already tried massaging his body in both the normal way and the fun way. Right. Sadly, neither of them worked because at the time uh he couldn't move anything except his head. But now that he has more now that he ha has more of a body, that's a weird sentence to say. Anyway, now that he has more of a body, I'll try that again later. Yes. Check meanwhile, this out. Meanwhile, Adam is just like starstruck at how far you two are willing to go to help him out. I don't like that. I don't like, look, you can probably wear that ring. Here, for example, 
as I approach Adam, I pull out a little hammer and then just tap his knee and then he just kicks me in the stomach. No. He the the most Adam can do with his legs right now is stand. And barely at that. So I'm gonna retract that because if you do that, he's gonna fall. I stand with my comrade. Unless we're shocking up there to wake it up. Not but, a chance in hell, Ice. <laughs> but the potential death behind it is like, what science? <laughs> For science, defibrillators. Yeah, no. Keep that shit away from me. Anyways. What about weaken the charge? No. I'm like, no. the no. charge in my hand. <laughs> No, that's not going to affect him. How about we just not electrocute me, yeah? I'll think about this. Motherfucker. No, it's not it's not exactly an electrocution, it's more of a jolt. It's to it's to empower your nervous system so you could get back on your feet. But and start walking again. I'm already on my oh. Well, I mean, I don't know. I kinda wanna just let it be a he looks at it for a slow burn over time because again this thing was dormant for a thousand years and if we just jump started like a car uh i don't know what happened and i kind of want to don't find out what happened jump start like a car we have cars here oh i gotta get me one uh well the city where I came from, there were cars. My character's eyes just brighten up a bit in excitement. Yeah, uh... Okay. May what, maybe if I ever find my way back over there, and I guess prepare myself for the culture shock, That'll happen. Uh, maybe we can get your hands on one. There will be a time for that. Priority one is... Well, right now, priority one is to, uh... To oh, get you fully recovered. And now, since we can't make any more progress right now, let's enjoy the festival. Yeah. And hopefully not die. Yeah. And because you all... You all made far more progress in <clears throat> restoring Adam uh, than I thought you would. Sign. Uh, where, where is it? Not the thing. <laughs> when he said science, I thought of that one freaking uh, video. Religion. <laughs> it fucking killed me on the inside. Uh, Adam and Ifrit friendship rank up from one to two. I will write those notes in later. Okay. Excuse me for a moment as I grab and take a inspect Adam's arms for a moment. <laughs> yeah. There's no hesitation. Yeah. To grab his arm. This will do. Honestly, at this point, all he needs is to exercise, and he'll be back into shape and within a week or so. I think that's how it works. How is he going to exercise if he can't walk? His body will slowly recover on its own. There's a simple method to this. We get two poles. I mean, like, handle poles, and have him walk like that. Exactly. However, we don't have that luxury right now, because we don't have metal to slap into the ground. Nope. We do this the old-fashioned way. Hey, wow. Ice, how about... Hey, what? Ice, how about we... We cut down this tree and make some crutches? He has a magical cane. Did you miss that part, Rick? Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> well, let me use my other magic stick. As I look at Adam, like... I recommend swimming for exercise with assistance in this situation. Just paddle your legs in the water. Should do you good. 
I already have plans to take him swimming. Good. Wait, how can... I'm curious, <laughs> can he swim when he's on fire like that? Adam? Yeah, the water isn't gonna extinguish his flames or anything. Well, curious. I'll cut this a wrap. <laughs> I'm a vibe fight. Back curious. <laughs> Curious. I'm, I'm I'm very curious of how his flames work now. They're just magic cursed flames. Yeah, but but the science behind his flames, though. Imagine what we could learn. The fact that it's cursed. <laughs> yeah, it, it, there's nothing to learn. It's just they're cursed. The only thing you can learn from it is harnessing its power, <laughs> and that's mm -hmm. the closest thing. Did you just jump into the lake? Yes. Well. Anyways, Adam, I hope I hope we see you recovery. Go. Fuck, what was I gonna say? <laughs> <laughs> it's like give me the thumbs up they're beginning your lives. Like, oh sh wait. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I I hope I get to see you walking around soon. Well, given I, all, all that you and yours have just done, I, I'll probably walk it a lot sooner than later. I need to send you a message real quick. Alright, that is the... Anyways, that enjoy is, your new body and perks, bye! Yeah, that, that's the end of that interaction. Go find someone else to talk to. Mm. Who's this frog? That's Joe. Joe. Good old Joe. He was actually... He was either, actually, I was going to go mess with Fred. Not Fred, Greg. If you want to mess with the frog, Joe, by all means. I will be here swimming in the lake. Anywho. Actually, I have a poop. Actually, my journey for that conversation. Fuck it. Hi, right, Joe. What up, Joe? Uh, hello. How okay, are you? Fish. As I plop out a fish. What the? Um. Disregarding the fish. I, uh, I heard you two gotten to a scuffle with your companions and. Uh, someone from, uh, what did they say? The old group of heroes that were supposed to be fighting the Devourer? Yes. A scuffle. That's a, light, that's a nice way of putting it. Yes, a friendly bar fight. Uh, from what I heard, it didn't really sound like a bar fight, given that no one was violently intoxicated I mean one was and intoxicated energy. with anger yes <laughs> huh well that aside uh, I'll let's offer you words of thanks for making sure that the threat was neutralized and nobody got hurt what's up well for you to assume at a bar fight, he's decided with people drunk. <laughs> well, where I came from, that was how bar fights started. Usually. But when you meet me, there's no alcohol involved. <laughs> Interesting. I will yeah. be sure to remember that. Yes. Anyways, Riku, you said that Joe knew something about the Dark Crystal? Uh, he... Uh... Has a purification spell for it. Alright. Joe! Uh... My... My friend back there... I'm always forgetting his name. Greg. Greg told me that you could purify this... Dangerous... Crystal. Uh, Sam says I'm dangerous. I say excitement. I can, though it will take quite a few days worth of time. 
as uh the last time I had to purify something even half this corrupt it I was let's say I slept for three consecutive days oh dear well don't worry Joe well in that case take your time on it it's no rush well that's the thing if I don't take my time, it will overtake me. And if I, I go yeah. too slow, it will overtake me. So I'll, I've worked at a my own personal pace when it comes to purification of corrupt items. However, I can't do anything about the exhaustion. And if I were to give a rough estimate, once I'm done with this, I will be sleeping for about six days. And because, and that because both of you have one, I'll be sleeping for about 12 days. Oh. Don't worry about mine. I'll keep my dark for a different situation. Not for me to touch it. For emergencies. What do I feel like you're gonna throw it at someone? Because you never know when you might need it. Right. I actually say this to extra Joe. Okay. But I'll make sure to bring you food though. In your time of doing this. Oh, why? Why, thank you. What do you eat exactly? I eat anything that is not poisonous. So like a fish. As long as the fish does not contain poison, I will eat it. Okay. Cooked or raw? It does not matter to me. Okay. Good. <laughs> does he, uh, like, does he take the fish with his tongue that just... I wasn't going to have him do that, but now I will. Because, like, we could just, you know, toss the fish in the air and he just catches it with his tongue and just swallows it. Yep, he's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's gonna do that now. Alright. Do it, Ice. Throw the fish. I don't know if he's hungry or not. Uh, the fish is already gone. Oh, fuck. Did he say no to it? No. Um, no. No, he said that he could eat anything as long as it's not poisoned. When I presented the fish, he said, the fish aside, and I assumed that's him just regarding the fish. Yeah, as soon as you pulled out the fish, he just... <laughs> yeah, like, like w once you mentioned bringing him food, that's when your fish suddenly vanished. Wow. Great reflexes. Yeah, well... I will never pass up an opportunity of someone offering me food. That is something I will never do. Dude, Yuki. Remember you bought that fishing rod from the lake? <laughs> Emphasis on fishing rod. <laughs> <laughs> you should you go fishing. Bring this man some fish. This is my this is what I do now. I just a fisher. Not an Esper, <laughs> like somebody else mentioned. Fish I mean, Whisperer. Man. Anyways, Joe, how much is it? How much is it gonna cost me for you to uh, purify this crystal? Well, I imagine you charge for this kind of service. Yes, I do because I have to close up shop for however long this would take. Well, a platinum diamond chest, do as I plop it onto the ground. Where the hell did you get that? Don't worry, concern yourself about that. <laughs> now I have it. Uh, he he takes one very long look at it, and he says, "Payment accepted." What? <laughs> All right, <laughs> that works, I guess. Ice, when did you fucking have a platinum chest? After I nuked an iceberg. When did you nuke an iceberg? <laughs> <laughs> the misadventures of just ice. <laughs> the misadventures of ice. Good god. Did this happen when I was like fucking sleeping after the fight with the uh, Wraith? It was like a Sunday the, match. This was something. that session you were at your grandparents. Oh. Um, yeah, him and Alec Lovely. fought a crystal ice dragon. And there was just a bunch of just chess laying around. I just took all of them with me. Of course. 
Because like, this might be useful. Yeah, you could... Wait. My character just stops and thinks, huh, how many or more of this chest do you have? As I, like, turn my pocket away, you don't need to know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to know. <laughs> That's an easy <laughs> basis. <laughs> My pocket, my rules. I have a tainted leaf as I pull out the tainted leaf. Damn. Wait, no, 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 no. Uh, when you pull out the leaf, Joe looks at it and he's like, Can you. Can you give me that as well? There you go. I think I can use that to speed up the process. Okay. Oh, in that case, the more the merrier just hands him my leaf as well. Yes. Two of these should very well speed up the process from just purifying the one crystal. Yes. Yes. What about this shard of energy? As I plop it out as I pull it out of my pocket. Um I was wondering why this leaf was so shiny. While this won't speed up the process, I can... I mean, it might help with your fatigue. Um... Well, I'm not sure about that. What I can do is... I can... can make it into a restorative uh, shard for you. Our science. I tried to absorb the energy off the shard. <laughs> Nothing happens. God damn it! <laughs> I'm just gonna toss the shard of the guy. As you were saying, Joe. Uh, I can take this and let me see. He ha he has the, the shard in his hand, and the longer he stares at it, the more it physically changes shape in front of you two. Oh. And by the time he's done staring at it, it is in the shape of a star. Huh. Star of energy it is. Okay. Uh, if you were to... I guess... Crush this in your hand, any effects of exhaustion, fatigue, hell, even hunger, will be immediately dissipated. I see. So let me... Uh let me type this out for you as an actual to, item. I'm gonna put my hand on uh, fucking Joe's shoulders like, and you keep it because you're gonna definitely need it more than I will. And you cleanse that crystal. I mean, you can do that, but maybe you wanna hold off on it until I type out what, what it now does. True. I thought I said do it because look at him. I can't say no to that face. I'm just, I'm just surprised that he's able to transmogify a leaf into a crystal. No, he did it. It was a shot of energy. That's that face now. I make sacrifices for this reason, Riku. <laughs> His eyes see. look dead. It looks pretty happy to me. I beg to differ. <laughs> Oh, it looks dead because he just he just gave him a dark crystal. <laughs> well, he's gonna need it after purifying that dark shard. Up what it does. Alright, so what should we do with this item, Ice? I mean, you have your own shard yourself that you can turn into an energy shard. Star. I'm handing off my Joe because. The fuck was that? Give me a second. Alright. So what are you gonna do with yours, Rick? Uh, since since you said that I could uh restore someone to well removes all effects, fatigue, hunger, negates 
the need for sleep and all that, I'm just gonna hold on to mine for now. Alright. Energy star. My neighbor knocked on my door. Uh. I thought I heard my uh, screen door open, and I was right. But anyways, I looked at Joe, put my hand on Joe, I was like, you keep this. With all the hard work you're doing for this crystal, you're definitely going to need it. Oh, why? Why, thank you, my good man. I very much appreciate it. As I go down the road of struggles. <laughs> as I look at my M people, rolls of struggles. <laughs> my 27 MP. You got 27? <laughs> Did we rest it since the last fight? <laughs> no. Exactly. Damn. You don't understand, Riku. Technically speaking, by biological time, this is all still one day. True. And you, I've been through previous sessions where I drained my MP pool. Also true. And, and I don't recover MP when I'm level up because I don't want to do that math. My character just taps you on the shoulder and says, you're looking kind of pale there. I beg to differ. My HP says otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your HP says otherwise, but you look fatigued. I mean, technically, if you go on a fighter with zero MP, he won't look fatigued. <laughs> He's got a point. He's like, man, I guess when man is out, it's hard to tell what it displays because ending physical sign would be more so related to HP. <laughs> also true. But yeah, back to Jukadar Joe. It's like, you keep that safe. When I was and done, Riku, I have a question because, like, I've uh, I've seen this happen a lot in some games where, like, when you when you uh, run out of mana in game, you can't move for a turn because you're exhausted. Is this gonna happen to us too? Nope. All right, just making sure. We're touched by God. <laughs> All right. Anyways. Black Crystal, he's going to purify it. He's going to restore his energy. Yes. So. As I bring up more, four more fishes, do you have any way to store this, Joe? To do what? Store them. Store them? <laughs> yeah, four more fishes. So you just like, save it somewhere else to eat. And I Don't eat it right now. I, uh, you know, you could just put ice in your platinum chest. I I can actually do that right now. He snaps his fingers and a very a very minor icy wind goes over the fish and they are now frozen. I might be able to hold you off for a day or so. You I, can also help the fish too. I have very I have very good methods of storing my energy for later use. They They'll, they'll last quite a while. I see. I need to learn this method at some point from you, maybe. Alright, there was also this. As he pulls out a mysterious vial. Uh, hmm. He's, he's staring at it and he's trying to understand what's inside of it. As far as you and you can tell it's just a clear liquid. Oh no, no, do we know it's just icker? Hmm. Don't but, look at it like that, it's not for drinking ice. <sighs> exactly, it's for putting on your skin. What? No! I... We don't even know what this is! I'm what not if it's corrosive? I'm not entirely sure what this could be, but I do feel very strange traces of magic inside of it. Exactly. Safe to drink. No. If you would... I have, 
I will kindly ask you if you would leave those with me so I can study them. I want to know what this is. Yeah. No problem. I mean, as... Well, I don't have a problem with that as I leave a vial at his table. I want to splash a monster with this in the face. Okay, go, I could either go both ways. You either burn the monster's face off or you empower it. At the end, it's going to be exciting for me. <laughs> either way, it's a win for you, I guess. Lord. I love the casual conversation between Yashua and Ice. Hunter X, Hunter, like, the guy's like, if I kill Kalua, I get the fucking, uh, fucking other mother's rat, and I win in the end. <laughs> My god. Alright, yeah. so I'm, I'm leaving the vial with him and the dark crystal, so let's uncheck, uncheck mark these. I don't remember what the star shard did. I think that was an equipable item. Star shard? Yeah, it's it, it's the uh, accessory I got for killing a wraith. Oh yeah. And the wind loader. Every time you walk, you get a bullet. Ah. Okay. Up, oh, Joe. Best of luck. To give him a pat on the back. Thank you. I will very much need it. Yes. I shake hands with Joe. Is he a fraud that discreet slime by any chance? No. Thank God. Because I touched his back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here shaking hands with them. Anyways. Let's uh, let's let's go see what the kids are up to. But I want to talk to Greg and yeet him over a fence. You bro. <laughs> let's go talk to the kids. You can talk to the kids. Last time I talked to kids, they stabbed me in the knee. I'm gonna shoot you in the knee in a moment. <laughs> okay. I forgot what was mentioned by them. So what? I forgot what they mentioned last time. Uh. Well, I remember they're, they're Jeremy, the was it? They're new to the festival. They're new to the village. Uh, Jeremy was asking a million and one questions about your world and where you came from. And then... The performance has happened. How the heck is your <clears throat> character not bouncing out to the center? Dude, your character just fucking poofed out of existence. Ah, oh, he's back! Don't worry, I'm trying to fix my character in the grid. Being dumb. It oh yeah, your a... character seems to be ignoring the grid physics. I mean, it, just, it, does... it doesn't really matter. It's just that... Since my character is perfect, since he's a square, fits anywhere on the grid. I have no comment on that comment. <laughs> uh, haha! <laughs> Be square or die. I'm kidding. <coughs> Anyways. Uh, fuck, I don't remember their names from the show. I just remember Jeremy. Jeremy, Ulrich, Odd, Aelita, Ulrich, and Yumi. Yes. I approach the children casually. <laughs> remember that meme? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Jeremy. Uh, you were... Yashua. Uh, Yashua. Uh, hey, how's, how's it going? Ah, uh, hey, hey. Everything's fine now. I just came to check up on you guys since, uh... Since that, uh, commotion we had earlier. Uh, I mean, we're... We're fine now. Angela came and talked to us and made sure we were alright. None of us were hurt. We were a little shaken up first, but yeah, now we just wanna enjoy the rest of the festival and see what's what's to offer. Cause like I said we met earlier, this is our this is all of our first time here. Hmm. How long, how long were you guys here for? I mean, in this world. Uh, we were, we were all born here. Alright. 
So we don't we don't know anything about outside worlds. We would I would like to, but I have a habit of asking way too many questions and overwhelming the person that I'm talking to at times. Nods. Uh, Ailita speaks up and she says, uh, We're really grateful for everyone who helped us get out of there, though. That, that goes without saying, and uh, we've been at least here in the village for about uh, what six or so days, and uh -huh. we've seen you all walking around and stuff before, but we just didn't bother talking until now. <laughs> A character feels a little awkward because he doesn't know how to talk to teenagers very well. Uh, Riku, question. Yeah? Alita is human, or is she a little bit cybernetic? She's human. Uh, this is after she got humanized, essentially. Ah. Uh, yeah, like, they're, they're not, they're not their, their direct counterparts in the show. They're just, they are the characters, personality-wise, what have you, but they're all human. They've never been to Lyoko, they don't know any anything about oh, Okay, them. okay, okay. Yeah. I thought there was some background story to them. Nope. Damn, I don't I honestly don't know what to talk about with these kids. Since I don't know if they give you a quest or not. I tell you what you talk about, you talk about fighting. And challenge the one that look edgy. <laughs> when I say challenge, I mean that way. Isn't he the one that uses the katana? Exactly. <laughs> oh my god, no. Yuki. No, I'm not gonna fight children. But you won't hesitate to, to shoot an old man in the leg. You're a demigod. You could take a bullet or three. Riku would deny the fact that I'm a demigod. Yeah, until he's I not a demi demigod. Until I get demigod status, I am not a demigod. <laughs> Uh, did we go status Riku? No. That is your question. <laughs> but the random shit that you've been pulling? He's not <laughs> actually a demigod, but he has the title of one. It's like Hercules feet going up to the <laughs> god. Anyway, uh Odd opens his mouth and he's like, hey, why are your eyes like that? Huh? Oh. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure. You see, I wasn't born with these kind of eyes. My eyes were just like yours, normal. Until I got here. I don't know why my eyes are like this. Uh, all I can think about in the background is like, speaking of eyes, what if I insert these luminous crystals into my eye? <laughs> oh my god, no. <laughs> You already have working eyes. <laughs> working, but not <laughs> luminous crystal working. Anyway. Anyways, my eyes, I do not know why they're like this, but they do have some benefits with them. I could uh, zoom in and out with them. I could see longer distances than normal. It, it really helps with my marksmanship. Oh, so you use, like, guns and arrows and stuff? Yes, anything anything that has to do with ballistics. Hmm. Well, our good friend Yumi over there has been practicing with the bow and arrow, bow and arrow whenever she gets free time from school. Ain't that right? And she looks over and she's like, ah, oh, shut the fuck up. Why are you, why are you running your mouth? <laughs> uh, the bow. There was a time when I used to use a bow as well. 
and suddenly Yumi is paying attention to the conversation. What kind of bow was it? It was a Yumi. Oh. It was a... What? What happened? I heard someone uh, shout. I just like the fact that she asked, what the fuck you use? And you said it was a Yumi. <laughs> it's a... Uh... It's a specialized bow called the Yumi. It was it was built for long, extreme long range engagements. It had a it had an interesting shape as as he uh, picked up a stick and just drew it on the floor. Huh. That that is interesting. I didn't know bows were made like that. They were, they were traditionally designed by, uh, I, f I forget the, the type of tribe these people were called, but they were made in the Far East. Only reason why I picked up the bow is because I was fascinated by its design. And the fact that it had a lot of range compared to your traditional bow. Hmm. Also... Also, in order to use these bows, you're gonna have to uh, gonna have a uh, quite a bit of upper body strength in order to pull the string. Wow. It doesn't look very flexible, but trust me, they really are. Do does this count as having enough upper body strength? As she walks over to Ulrich and she very easily lifts him up by his shirt with one arm. Okay. Yeah, no, you put me down. What are you doing? Stop it. <laughs> My character just chuckles. That's more than enough. Great. If anything, with that kind of strength, you'll be able to use it sideways. Oh no, I just have to find one. Riku, is it possible to craft the bow with the with the magic stick I have? No. Damn it. I was gonna gift her the magic stick. Well no, I'm I'm saying you can't make the bow, but someone else can. Ah. So if you wanna give her the stick, you can. You know what? Yeah, I'll give her the stick. Here. This stick has some interesting properties. I believe it will make a good a good catalyst for the bow. Huh, well, thanks. Uh, hopefully I can find someone who can make it into the bow that's apparently named after me where you come from. Or <laughs> it and I share a name. Yeah, it's kind of funny, isn't it? Yeah. Never thought I'd live to hear where a weapon and I share a name together, but hey. Learn something new every day, I suppose. Learn something new every day. Okay, uh, let's see. Also, if you guys want, you can go over to the docks. I mean, these docks, the one I stood on to talk uh, to no, Adam with? No, a different set of docks. Oh. Anywho, I'll be on my way. You lads take care now. See you later, see you around. What the hell are you doing over here? Waiting to initiate conversation. That was happening during the time you're talking to the teens. Well, oh no, I feel like there's something special about those kids. Yeah, time wise, by the time I talked to Greg, you would have been with the kids at that time. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, do your thing. Talk that to was, that was like, sorry. Gregor. Gregor. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Oh. Hello, Ice. How goes yes. it, my friend? I see you survived. Oh, that's a harsh way of putting it. Yeah, I, uh... I was going to... jump into the fight, but Adam... I'm not Adam. Alex said no. And he dragged me out of there by my tail. I see. Probably wise. Probably wise. I'm not sure how much... I'm not sure how much you can take in hits when you don't wear armor that I can see that I noticed. I have no like, need for armor. I thought it's eyeball him ever so closely. I have no need for armor. My pecs That's are so. armor. Why is that, Greg? I sort of got it. That's the lie he says. <laughs> My pecs are armor. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my feathers give me adequate enough protection, and no one makes armor that will fit on duck, and Alex refuses to do so. Because every time I did in the past, you broke it. Within minutes. Also, speaking of feathers, it's a feather. I found it interesting. You have a feather? When am I gonna get a feather for my head? Um, I mean, normally any old feather would do, but if you would like when to be you're... fancy and fabulous like I, you need or a Alex. sparkly feather. <laughs> this, yes. <laughs> However, uh, those are most commonly seen in the West. You will not find them on the eastern side of the country. Mm, I have that big throne through my bag. What do I have? Can you shape something into a feather? I... I can, but... It has to be a legitimate, natural feather. I meant like a stone into a feather. So I'd like slowly pull out the shiny stuff. <laughs> um, I don't think I can refine this into a feather, but See. I can use it to add some sparkles around your head. Even better. I agree with this. As I slide it his way. <laughs> okay. So you give him the stone. And once he finishes, uh, essentially stomping the hell out of it and beating it with the hammer, he tosses it in the air around your head, and now you and Greg have the same sparkles around your face. Yes. Oh, that reminds me, Alex. I beat down a dragon with this. I forgot to show you the last time I was around. I got these crystal dragon scales. Can you do anything with them? Oh. Hmm. I think... I think I can use these to bolster the defenses of your armor that I made for you earlier. Hmm. I approve of this. I approve of this. I'm like halfway through where you where you guys are right now. However, I can't upgrade all of the pieces, so this looks like enough for just one piece. And I hold off to then. Okay. Also, I like runs to my bag. I found me a new weapon. Like deep, deep into it, I now pull out the corrupted sword blade. <laughs> Alex, like... Alex appears to be entranced by the weapon before he what? eventually speaks up and says, hmm, by chance, where did you get this? Of, of a lady that was a bum equivalent of me. That smelled quite funny, 
look quite hellish in comparison to me. Well, maybe not that though. But it's about dead, nonetheless. Not the type of dead you find. Recent. Like, old dead. Huh. But it does keep down for fair. I'm not gonna lie. Adam is... I mean, not Alex is... Very intensely examining the blade. Could you... Could you place it on the ground for me? Like gently or stab it? <laughs> okay. Uh, either or, it doesn't matter. Stabbing into the ground it goes. Okay. You stab the sword into the ground. Alex raises his arm up into the air. And oh, God, what? he swings his arm across the blade. And he breaks it in half. My blade. I hear the loud, a loud crash where I'm Thank at. You. Hmm. He picks up the, he picks up the two halves of the broken blade, and he looks up the six hands. Also, you would do that conversation a lot quicker. I have not reached the amount of conversation time you had. <laughs> Interesting. Well, it's that crash that got my attention. This is what happens when two parallel conversation happens. Because you can't get that kind of it's like a bit questionable. Okay, while you're having that conversation, you're gonna go dip in the water. <laughs> Alex I mean, he he takes the blades, he places the broken pieces back together, and the and the blade fixes itself. He breaks the I'm, blade again, and he sees a small jewel embedded into the broken section of the blade he takes it out he he physically grabs one of the sparkles by greg's head and combines the two together the jewel that was in the sword is no longer uh black and purple and it has thus been purified he puts the two blades back to get well he puts the broken blade back together, and it is not. <clears throat> Fuck, excuse me. Uh, it is now a prism sword. Interesting. I'll get the stab for that later. Yeah. I thought the blade is like, maybe now I can stab that crystal. <laughs> <laughs> no way. I'm gonna lose my dead crystal. How dare I? <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. In, oh, excuse me. Now, in case you're wondering how I did that, uh, in my family, we can very easily detect the origin point of corruption within weapons and armor, and our blood carries a special type of element when it comes to metals and magic and things like that and it allows us to easily purify uh, small corrupt crystals and jewels and things like that we can't do it often but for things like weapons and such it's no big deal for us Plus, the weapon ultimately winds up shifting into something new, as it just did with that. So, here's a free weapon, I guess. Thank you. I think I'm going to reach for one of Greg's sparkles now. Uh, Greg notices, and he, <clears throat> he like, jumps up and smacks your hand. You have your own sparkles now. What do you need mine for? True. I got one of mine. I'm gonna close it into my hand and pour mana into it, trying to enlarge it. That moment of silence. Hang on. I basically try to muscle flex. <laughs> That's all oh, equipment of something similar to that. Look at that, Dan! Yeah! <laughs> okay, Whoa. well, uh, you do that. 
the singular sparkle <coughs> excuse me uh, the single sparkle you grab does indeed uh, increase in size and now you have a throwing item to use in combat right as I look at Greg C it wasn't something horrible I was testing a science is equivalent you can also use it to you can also use it as a uh, source of light up to 30 feet and you can throw it wherever you want I'm calling it throwing dust throwing star dust as I look to Greg as I like, see it's sending a little bit of mana comes a little a bit of a ways huh how innovative of you. Yes. And you could be even more sparkly. You can decorate your the uh, base of operation for sparkles. I could, but then it would be too bright. Because I am the brightest source of my store, and if I add more, well, then that might be a problem for the visually impaired. Or those who aren't affected by sources of light. True. Hmm. So I contemplate this idea. Hmm. You could sell it as weapons. What, the sparkles? Yeah, like I'll have that idea to Greg. Uh, I would, but I come with them. They are a part of me. Are they? Yes. But I watched Alex grab one from you with ease and use it. And you look just as fine as before. Maybe one less sparkly, but just as fine as before. Yes, but that doesn't mean I'm just going to give them up willy-nilly. Alex True. is the only one I allow to touch my sparkles. Oh. You must feel special, Alex. As I look at Not really, for as much this bastard gets on my nerves. Well, I can invent the sport. I can bring the sport baseball in here. Say that again? I, th I can probably bring the sport baseball into here. <laughs> oh, Greg. It was nice seeing you. I don't think I have anything of other interest on me as much. Uh, as always, my friend, it was a pleasure talking with you. Yes. Like questions that were just like a magical duck. But the feather is hard. As I turn it back to Greg, are your feathers naturally hard or do you hand stop? Uh, my feathers are as hard as I want them to be. I can determine their softness or hardness without having to use magic. It's a matter of, um... I suppose you could say I can flex my feathers at will. When you say flex, you mean like something like this as, like, as I flex my torso a little bit. <laughs> Just pops out. Oh my god. Or is there a specific way you do it that isn't similar to that? I mean, of course you don't do it like this. Because you have feathers, but you know what I mean? Um, I just consciously think if I want to, if I want them to be hard or soft. That's, that's all that really goes into it for me. Oh, this means I have to meditate on this. As I waddle off. <laughs> <laughs> nice seeing you again. Good luck, Alex. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna fucking need it.
Okay. Now, I try to do the hard and soft thing. I meant to concentrate. Huh. With that interaction out of the way, uh, I'm gonna. I gotta call it here. I gotta call it early because I have stuff I gotta do. Obligation. So I'm going to hit the stop recording button now.